We did this before on Disgaea 5 and we failed miserably. Granted, that was because of my own stupidity. Will we have a repeat here? Because with Disguise 7 right around the corner, I figured it was time to see if we can beat Disgaea 6 using only a single Prinny. And hey, Future Primal here, I'm adding this into the script because there is madness in this run that I seriously bet you will not believe. So, let's go dude. Okay, like any other challenge run, we need rules to make our life harder. And there's no return of the dude rule, sorry. Okay, rule number one, we are only allowed a single prinny. Apart from the memory stages, like the very first tutorial stage, this means if my Prinny dies, that stage is instantly lost and we need to restart. Rule number two, reincarnation is allowed, but at no point am I allowed to upgrade the tier of a unit. For example, I cannot start with a Prinny and upgrade it to a Prinny God, the tier six version. Prinnies are the bottom of the barrel, so... Let's keep it that way. Rule number three. Other characters at no point are allowed on the stage. I can, however, level other characters using squads in order to get Evelties from them if required, though. Now, let's start. And we get screwed right out of the gate. Because in Disgaea 6, once you gain control, this is the only Disgaea game we don't actually have a Prinny right from the get-go. Nor will we get the ability to make one until later. So, run dead, right? No. We can actually use the Hololive DLC to get Fubu King, who just so happens to be a Prinny, which means we can start. Oh, and I also steal the gear from the other Hollow Live members and equip it to our Prinny. So the idea here is to complete all 15 chapters of the game with each chapter having five stages in them, giving us a total of 75 stages to complete. Now, this would normally be pretty easy, and in fact, is rather easy. For the first four stages, as we blow right through them without even having to do anything. I am glad, however, that monsters in Disguise 6 can lift and throw. Otherwise, the run would have died on just the second stage. That would have been embarrassing. And also, I will be using Auto Battle a lot in the early game. Reason being, I don't need any form of strategy in these early fights. So, it just saves me some time. The fifth stage, however, puts us against the God of Destruction, a fight we're supposed to lose. Thankfully, because of the DLC equipment we have from the Hololive members, we just have enough health to survive the slapping contest and fluke a win. This is the only time that's going to happen, though. Every final stage of a chapter is going to be a God of Destruction, and it gets a lot stronger each time. We managed to abuse the free DLC for the tutorial, but that's not going to cut it in the future chapters. Not even close. I can tell you right now that if I just rush through stage 2 when we get to the god at the end of that, he'll murder me. And in fact, I'll just show you right now why that is the case. In Disguise 6, the stats and levels go much higher than in previous titles. This also means the stat increases across chapters is also much higher. Heck, we nearly die in stage 2-1, really showing this off. However, once we complete that stage, we unlock the quest shop, something we're going to start taking advantage of. So, let's accept all the quests for now and turn in any we can do. By doing these quests as we go, it's going to allow us to get a ton of new Evelties and new spells, such as healing and magic attacks like fire, ice, and star magic. Something we might need later on. So it's best to start working on these quests right now. Also, I grabbed the Cerberus suit, because while it has no stats, it does start with one extra movement, 5 extra jump and 10% extra critical chance. I also might abuse this later. 
I also complete the demerit for FUBU now as well, as we can get some nice bonuses for doing that, such as earning extra weapon EXP, normal EXP, skills, and even some good gear later on. Now, let's make our life a little easier. We're going to change things in the cheat shop, and despite its name, it is not cheating. It's just an NPC we can use to change the game options. I lower the amount of money, mana, weapon and class experience I earn to 90% and then I raise EXP to 150%, allowing me to level easier. Then I use the Dark Assembly to commence Prinny Day. This means I can only use Prinnies on the next stage, but hey, that's what we're doing anyway. But in doing so, I do get a nice reward if I win. I do, however, have to start healing in this stage because I'm taking so much more damage now. We're already losing at effectiveness here from the equipment we got from DLC characters upon completing stage 2-3. We unlock the Squad Shop, a collection of groups we can put our characters into to gain some unique effects. There's not much we can do with it now, mind you, but we will get a lot of benefits from that later on. On stage 2-4, I play with the Geo effects to gain a 50% stat boost and to lower enemy stats by 50%, since without doing that, I will absolutely die on this stage, since even with healing, it was really, really close. So of course, I lost the very next stage against the God of Destruction. Surprisingly though, I only just lost. So, I use the Everty Scrolls I have from quests and teach Fubu, Quickfooted, Vanguard, Hawkeye, and Dense Guy. It gives me a little stat increase, so let's try again and see if that's enough. And of course it wasn't. I still got murdered. Okay, we're gonna have to grind a little. But before we get into the video, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest, then check down below in the description and drop a follow to me on Twitter and Twitch, where I stream three days a week. Also down there is a link to our Discord community, where you can hang out with me and other like-minded people. And of course, remember to smash that like button and drop a comment down below, as it really helps to combat YouTube's shitty algorithm and give the channel a nice boost. Also, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content. And for those who want to go above and beyond in helping to support the channel, then down below as well is my Patreon link and also my merch store, PrimalStore.net. And if you use code PrimalXmas, you get 20% off all orders until the end of the month. And now, back to the video. So, I use stage 2 free here, murdering Hero King Yamada over and over, but I pay attention to my rewards. Once we get a bit of mana here by winning the fight five times, I go back to the Dark Assembly and pass the Demonic Intelligence Bill. This lets me set up my own custom commands for the AI to follow. It's not a perfect one by any means, but the setup I go for is a simple one. It checks if there's an innocent on the field. If there is, it moves towards it, and then if I'm in attack range, it will attack the innocent. If not, I'll defend. If there's no innocent, it does the same, but for normal mobs instead. I would love to go into the item world right now, but we're just too weak to really make a good dent in it currently. So I go back to leveling in stage 2 free for a little bit before trying the god out again, and at level 610, more than twice his level, we get our way and take him down. Episode 3 brings a bunch of new problems though. Firstly, zombies are introduced, a mob that heals when damaging me. The big issue though is they inflict poison. Poison in Disgaea heals one quarter of my maximum health as damage each turn for 3 turns, meaning it nearly kills me. I barely managed to clear stage 3 1 because of it. Now, I can make myself immune to poison by using the skill shop and buying, uh, buying? buying the poison vaccine Evelty for 200 mana, which is exactly what I do. Now it's back to the story, until I die in stage 3-3 anyway. Right, it's time to bite 
the bullet, or we're going to be stuck here for ages. So, it's time for a grind. I use the cheat shop to rage enemy stars to 5, increasing their level and in turn the amount of EXP they give. Then I go back to stage 2-3, after I do a few fights I raise the star value again and keep repeating this process until I can grind stage 2-3 on 20 stars. Okay, nearly level 3000 now, so let's take this chance to run into the item world and get each of our pieces of equipment up to level 10. Just don't forget to lower the stars back down to zero. Thankfully, with our level, we have no issue getting to floor 10. And since we have poison vaccine, there's pretty much nothing that can hurt us. So I slap auto battle and auto repeat on and go grab some food and then come back to it glitching out on me because it can't detect the enemy mob. Seems like I need to fix my demonic intelligence setup. We'll do that later though once we finish off the first item. The good news though is that we complete a whole bunch of quests in here as well. Now, just from gaining those 10 levels on our items, we multiply their stats by 5, giving us a huge increase. But, it's a one-off only for such a big increase. Future levels would be smaller increases. I also level the Innocent Farm squad and put FUBU in it. We might need to abuse Innocence later and this is the very first step to doing that. For now though, let's go back to stage 3-3 three, three for revenge and then continue on with the story. Until we die in stage 3-4 anyway, because of a really annoying geo panel effect that takes 50% of my maximum HP whenever I end the turn on it. AKA, two turns on the red floor means I'm dead. So, I take auto battle off and do the stage manually. Oh, the horror of playing the game manually. Something you absolutely can't do according to people who don't like the auto battle feature. Okay, our next problem is stage 4-1. There's one mob that is just too high up. We can't get to him. So, we need to either use magic or get shoes with a high jump value so that we can climb the wall. It's back to the item world, and I'm not messing around now. We unlock Hunter Team and start spending our EXP on leveling that all the way up. It's going to come in very handy later at max level. Next, we're going to level up an item to level 100. And the reason is, on floor 100 there's an item god or an item god 2 if your item is over level 80. Once we kill that, we get an Arcadia from the Demerits, a rank 39 item. And once we get to floor 100 on the Arcadia, we can get a Trapezodon, which I jumped straight to because my item was over level 80. When I reached floor 100, so I got the item god 2, and in turn, the Trapezodon, which is one of the absolute best items in the game. This version isn't though, it's only normal rank instead of Carnage or Rexasha, but hey, we can't get them until post game anyway. Now normally, I'd be happy about getting this, but honestly I don't really care about it. We need more movement and more jump. The good news is, by doing the item world in a trap item, we can easily get all the best gear, including accelerators, which boast good movement and massive jump ability. So, we're going to keep running the trap item until we get free accelerators, but while doing this, we're going to farm innocence as well. And finally, any bad items we get, we're just going to turn into item points, which we can use to boost items with later. This part takes a while though. What might surprise you about this run is, so far, it's really not coming down to stats much at all. It's more effects and how we set up, and then possible problems like heights and distance. If we just look at stats, then this run is more than possible. At least, I think so anyway. But thinking about different stage requirements, I'm not so sure. There's still a lot of things that can get in our way, with us being limited to just a single unit. Now, sadly, after way too long, 
I just wasn't getting lucky with accelerators. So I use Vernier thrusters instead. They do offer less movement and jump ability, but by using the item points we farm to boost those items and the trapezium we got earlier, and lastly our weapon, we can get massive amounts of movement, jump, and also massively increase our attack range. I also use my newfound wealth of mana and HL to purchase the speed upgrades as I go through the dark assembly and then spend all the saved up EXP I have boosting my Prinny's class efficiency. Once all is said and done, we end up with stats like this. 500 million in stats, 5 billion in HP and SP, 25 movement, 139 jump, 11 attack range, I'm immune to all statuses thanks to innocence, and I use the Gourmet Chef, Flyer, and Spear Fisherman Unique Innocence on my gear. This way I heal 10% of my HP every attack, I heal 20% HP when I kill something, and my movement is now flying type. This means I can run over mobs and climb any wall no matter how high it is. So let's continue on. And I know what you're thinking. The answer is no. This isn't overpowered. In fact, Disguise 6 caps your stats at 32 trillion. So 500 million isn't really a lot. And also, no, I can't just steamroll the game. There's actually quite a few things that can still kill me. Quite easily at that, I might add. But we'll talk about that when we get there. For now, we go back to the story and steamroll the early stages, since we're now coming up to 300 hours. I tell you, Auto Grinder is absolutely amazing in this game for this sort of challenge. Once we hit stage 6 free though, we have a problem. Explosions. I told you I can't just fly through the game because Prinnies have an intrinsic effect. They instantly die to explosions no matter what. And there's lots of bombs here. Oh, and the mobs like throwing them as well. In order to clear this stage, I have to do the mobs in a very specific order. By focusing on the mobs which throw up bomb barrels first and then cleaning up the remaining ones, afterwards another wave spawns though on the other side of the map. This is where all my extra movement really comes into play and proves its worth here as without that I wouldn't have been able to do this stage. Next issue is stage 10-1. We are forced to use Zed, and there's no summon point for me to bring out my Prinny. So, by definition, the run is over, you can't beat Disguise 6 with only a Prinny. But what if we treat this stage like the tutorial at the start? Well, we would have to grind Zed, which means using Kim, that's not allowed. We could use squads, but that takes time. So, I like to just give him the gear I leveled on my Prinny. This way, we can get past the stage, even with a level 1 Zed. But damn, this really, really sucks. We got so far, and then they throw this stage in. But... Run's not over. Remember, in my Disguise 5 Prinny Only Challenge, there's a stage on there which forced the main character only. And we allowed that. So, I'm going to allow it again, just to see if the rest of the stages are possible or not. So, gear goes back to the Prinny, and we move on to stage 10-2, where Fubu King is usable again. And proceed on with no more issues, until we eventually get to the final stage against the big, bad boss himself. And he dies to a counter hit. So I guess the real God of Destruction here is just a mad Prinny. But that was really anticlimactic. So, I feel we should also go and try Ball for memes, right? Yeah, let, let's do that. Since we already found out you can't beat the game just using a Prinny because of the two forced Z stages in the game. One tutorial and one later stage. You can complete the story with extra grinding though if you ignore those two small stages. So, Ball time. 
Since there were already 301 hours into the run, what's an extra hour? So pass the bell in the dark assembly and unlock the first of many post-game stages needed to unlock a ball. But at least we get to see Flown and Lahal, right? Upon all of these fights being done, you get a new bill to pass in the assembly along with Carnage mode. So, you know the deal. Let's pass them and fight the big bad ball on normal mode. And other than a few zombies surviving, uh, we, we did it, which I'm honestly not surprised about. The main thing I was worried about this run was geo effects and explosions. I knew levels and stats were not going to be an issue this run. Oh, and by the way, here, here's a carnage mode stage. But yeah, stats and levels were never going to be a problem. I knew this. I did get a little worried about movement and eye, uh, height issues early on though, and that's why I did such a massive grind. Which, you know, obviously really proved itself handy during the uh, chapter 6 where we had the explosions. But, as you can see, I can't even do the first carnage mode stage because I'm so vastly underleveled. My stats are high enough, sure, but... There's damage and defense values baked into the level system. If I'm way lower level, I do way less damage no matter what. So, after 301 hours, you can beat Disgaea 6 with just a single printy. But, you get abused the minute you step into Carnage mode. And I don't want to grind this printy anymore, so we'll stop here for now. But who knows what Disgaea 7 will bring. And if you want to see that, then remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out my socials down below. And a big, big thank you to all of my Patreons like... Alex Pete, Ditzlord, Michael Williams, Strike08, Captain Alrix, Lassie Serm, Lunique, Michael, Michael Harb, Triton Wolf, and Patches 777 and everybody else on the list. A big thank you to everybody. And of course, if you want to get your name featured up here as well, then take a look at the Patreon link down below in the description. Until next time though, everybody, I will see you later.